In this video, we'll be building this 6S Cinewhip on the Beta FPV Pavo 30 Pro frame. This drone is almost the exact same size as Beta FPV's Pavo 360. In fact, it uses the exact same dots. This is a relatively new frame from Beta FPV, and I actually haven't seen any videos featuring it yet, so I'm excited to show you guys how easy it is to build this drone. So before I get into this build, big shout out to Beta FPV for sending me all this gear so I can make this video for you guys. Let's take a look at all the parts that I'm using for this build. First off, the frame. So this is the Beta FPV Pavo 30 Pro frame, and it comes with pretty much everything you need. It has fixed XT60 connector, that comes with a bunch of 3D printed mounts, so you probably won't have to 3D print anything for this. It comes with some foam that you can put around the ducts, as well as a battery grip for the top. It comes with a bunch of screws. We have two carbon fiber plates that are included, and this is the bottom one. We have a 20 by 20 in the middle with a 26 by 26 around it, so this one will hold the flight controller. And this top plate has two 20 by 20 mounting spots. For the flight controller, I'm gonna be installing this Beta FPV F722 2 to 6S all-in-one 35 amp board. And this is the flight controller and ESC all-in-one, so there won't be an additional board that we have to work with. This board features a plug right here that connects right to the Cadex Vista. And if you're not using a Cadex Vista, you can use this plug to connect to your VTX anyways. Since we're on the subject of VTX, I'm gonna be installing a Polar Vista kit on this drone. If you don't plan on building a digital version, I'm gonna leave links down in the description for analog alternatives as well. For motors, I'm gonna be installing these Beta FPV 2004, 1700 kV motors. These are also available in 3000 kV if you want to build a 4S version. I'm going to be building a 6S Cinewhip, so I'm using these. For the receiver, I'll be using this Beta FPV ELRS 900 megahertz receiver. They also make an 816 megahertz version and a 2.4 gigahertz version. And lastly, I'll be using these five blade Gemfan D76 three inch props. All right, so to start, let's get our frame out of the box. Looking at the two carbon fiber pieces that hold this all together, make sure that you are putting the screws in this way because as you can see, there's like a little indent on the screw holes. So the screws will be going through this way, whereas this way it's just completely flat. You don't want screws going in this way. So normally I'd say first thing you gotta do is assemble your frame, but this frame is four pieces and some screws and it goes together very easily. So what I'm gonna do first is actually focus on the flight controller and getting some things soldered up to that. If you're using a 26 by 26 flight controller, these little tabs right here are actually gonna be blocking the 26 by 26 mounting holes. So just take some side cutters like these and just cut these little tabs off. These are used on the Pavo 360 but they're not gonna be used on this build, so just cut these off. Right like that. Now with those little tabs cut off, you can clearly see the 26 by 26 mounting hole. So I'm gonna take the flight controller out of the box, and what I'm gonna actually do is, we're not using this XT60 connector. So when you're looking at the flight controller, you'll see a little arrow and that's pointing towards the front of the drone. So when you're installing this in the drone, you want that arrow to be facing forward. Obviously we don't have the 26 by 26 holes in a diagonal pattern. So when we go to program the drone, we're gonna have to tell Betaflight that the flight controller is rotated 45 degrees. So let's get this set up. First thing we'll do with the flight controller is get these little rubber grommets installed and do these three. Don't do this one yet because we're gonna solder the XT60 on here next. Little trick, I'm sure most of my subscribers know this by now because I feel like I include this on every build I do. Take some dental floss, put it through the hole and this just makes it a hundred times easier to get these grommets through.
And like I said, just do that to these other two. Leave the one that's next to the battery pads open. All right, so with those three grommets in, now we can solder on our XT60 and our capacitor. I already trimmed my capacitor leads, but the longer one is the positive and the shorter one is a negative. I have them trimmed down and bent a little bit so that I can put them in the flight controller a little easier, but you're gonna wanna basically just have it go over the flight controller into these little holes right there. And then the XT60 wire is gonna go in right like that. So it's gonna be easiest if you solder this all from the other side. So find a way to secure your board and get some solder on there and the solder should hold the capacitor and the XT60. There we go, that looks pretty clean. So now we can always move this capacitor up and maybe zip tie it to the wires if we have to, but I'm gonna just keep it like that for now. Now what we can do is secure this to the top plate. Hey guys, Tron Cat from the future here. I was just installing the Cadex Vista and I realized that I installed this plate upside down. So when you install this this way, you can actually take this little mount right here and it sits right on top of the XT60, right like that. And now this sits right like that. And you can take your antenna and feed it right through that hole and that's how you'll connect it to the Vista. So install your XT60 like that, as opposed to how you're gonna see it for the next 10 or so minutes. I messed up, whatever dude. Make sure it looks like that. All right, let's put this aside. So now what I'm gonna do is install the motors on each arm. And again, like I said before, make sure that you put the screws going in this way. So just take note of where these like divots, I guess you'd call them are, and put the screws in going that way. And also when you're doing the motors, these can also go on when you're putting the motors on. So these are just kind of little skids that'll go on the bottom underneath the motors. So I'm gonna start by putting the screws in through this and this will kind of hold each one in place. Now you can take this and just put it right like that. And the TPU kind of holds it in place so you can get the motor on there have the motor wire go along this inner arm, not this one. And then just screw it down. And do the same thing to all the other ones. There we go. So now what we can do is take the four screws that came with the flight controller and we're gonna push those through the 26 by 26 mounting holes. And what I would suggest doing is, instead of putting the flight controller directly on this, they give you eight of these little hex screws. So I would just use them to uh, not only hold the screw in place, but it's also gonna help elevate the board off of the carbon fiber frame. And if you have the power or, and ground touching the carbon fiber frame, you'll get a short circuit and you could burn out your board. So. I would suggest putting the little nylon bolts on the screws to hold it in place. Plus it just makes it a little easier to work with and then you're not gonna short circuit your equipment. So when you're looking at this frame, the end with two additional holes on this end is the front. Back here is only these two, so that's the rear. This is the front. So when I put the flight controller on here, I'm gonna have the arrow that's on the flight controller facing as forward as possible. Now the 26 by 26 is rotated like this. So when we plug this into Betaflight, we're gonna have to tell it that the flight controller isn't sitting like this, it's actually sitting like this. I'll show you guys how to do that later on. 
Right now, I'm gonna have the flight controller sit right like this because I'll have better access to the USB. So I'm gonna put it right over those holes. And now take the remainder of the little nylon bolts and put that on and just secure this to the frame. And just make sure the board's secure. And as you can see, there's a good amount of space between the carbon fiber frame and the flight controller. That's what you want. Now we can attach the motors to the flight controller. So I'll do one and you can kind of assume the rest. Basically, these little ducts have a cutout for the motor wires. So when you're putting this on, it's gonna sit like this. And this little cutout right here, the motor wires are actually gonna get, feed, get fed through here and attached to the flight controller that way. So when you're attaching this, just make sure that you have enough slack for that. And since we rotated the board, take note of which ESC goes to which motor. This one down the very bottom is ESC1, this is ESC2, and then this is ESC3, and this is ESC4. So motor one is gonna go right to this one, and then motor two here, three, four. But I'm gonna give myself enough slack, so right there looks good. I'm gonna remove this. And I'm just gonna cut the wires right there. Splice these. I'm gonna put some flux on the ESC that I'm soldering to. And I'll just do it to all the other ESCs as well because I'm here. Put a little bit of solder on the ESC. And put a little bit of solder on the end of each motor wire. So I'm gonna solder these onto the ESC now. I'm gonna trim this down just so it's a little easier to work with. Nice and quick. There you go. And these wires will be secured once the frame is on there. So I'm gonna do the same thing to the other motors and we'll continue. All right, so everything's all soldered up. We have nice easy access to the USB right here. I gave the motor wires some slack so those will be able to sit right here nice and clean. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get the standoff on here and I'm gonna put these little 3D printed mounts that came with the frame on here. So those go around the standoffs that come with it. There's only two standoffs, these two. And they go on the inner hole. Like that. And then, and then do the same for this side. that and then this little mount right here is going to be for the antenna for the receiver and then this will actually hold the receiver and the camera so i'll have this go right like this and now with that on there before i put this one on i'm going to actually get the cadex vista all set up so we have to do a little bit of soldering to this so let's open this up get this out of the box and we'll get this attached to the board So before we secure this to the frame or anything, we're going to want to take this wire, and the Cadex Vista actually comes with one as well, um, take this wire and we're going to solder these wires to this right here. 
These two wires over here I'm not using because these are for the DJI receiver. I'm not using that, so I'm gonna remove these. So we're gonna be soldering to these four pads right here. These two on the side are for if you're using the DJI controller. Like I said, I'm not using that, so I'm gonna ignore these pins. Right here we have TX, right next to that is RX, and then ground, and then voltage. So I'm going to put a little bit of solder on there, and then we'll get this soldered up. So when you're wiring this up, make sure that the white wire goes to TX, yellow goes to RX, black goes to ground, and red goes to voltage. So pretty much the way that it comes out of this, it's gonna go right onto the Vista, right like that. Now just twist this for some extra fun. Keep it clean. All right, so the Vista's all soldered up, ready to go. Now what we wanna do is get the antenna on here. Now to do the antenna, we're gonna have to take off our XT60. Dude, shut up. To install the antenna, we're gonna have to take off the XT60 connector right here. So just take these two screws off. and the antenna is gonna go right into here. So unless you have an antenna like this, the Polar Vista antenna actually will be kind of tough to get into that because it doesn't actually fit into this cutout. But what you can do, and what I did, is cut off this little shielding right here. So then it looks like this. And then you can feed it through here, push this through there, and now you have a nice long antenna that'll be able to connect to the Vista nice and easy. So let's put the XT60 back together. I'm gonna to feed this through the power cable like that, and then put this on top and put this back together. All right, so now I'm going to secure the Cadex Vista to the top plate right here. I'm gonna put all these through. And now I'm gonna take the Vista and just pay attention to which direction it's facing. So I'm gonna want it to be facing like that. So I'm gonna put it on right like this. And then just use some little screws to secure that to the frame. So now I'm gonna attach the antenna. We'll get the little cover back on there. I also moved the capacitor over a little bit just because since the Cadex Vista is gonna be sitting right above the board, just needed to free up a little bit of space for that, but that's no problem. You just push this aside. You have a lot of space on the side here. So put the antenna on and then we'll put that little cover back over it. Cool beans. This looks sick. All right, so the last thing we gotta get soldered on here is the receiver. So I'm using this Nano receiver. So I'm gonna solder this up to RX6 and TX6. And that is right here. So we have TX, RX, ground, and five volt. So I'm gonna use these pads right here, gonna put some flux on there, get some solder, solder the wires up, and get this connected. So just like the Vista, we're gonna connect the RX to TX and then TX to RX. So I got the receiver all hooked up. Next, we just gotta get the antenna installed and I'm actually going to install the antenna like this 
and I think that this is gonna make it a little cleaner just because the antenna wire is pretty short. So I'm gonna have it run right like that and then I'm just gonna zip tie this right to the frame right here. So I'm gonna put some heat shrink around the receiver and then we'll get the antenna secured. All right, so I just noticed that there is heat shrink included with the receiver, so you can use that. I didn't see it, it was at the bottom of the bag, so I just have this red one. Um, so now what I'm gonna do is lift up on this, and we're gonna get the antenna installed. So this just kind of sits underneath this groove, and then the antenna slides in through this hole. All right, so now with that secured, you can take this and just put it right back over the standoffs. And there's your antenna. So I'm gonna put a zip tie, and just kind of secure this right there. So I'm gonna get the camera in this little 3D printed sled and this not only mounts the camera, but it also has a little uh, sled back here for the receiver. So you don't have to mount it to the frame if you don't want to. I just choose to do that just because I don't want to be fumbling this wire or have it interfering with the camera at all. So I feel like it's just better to just have it sitting underneath, but you could put it up here if you wanted. So the camera should come with some screws. You can choose whichever hole you want to use. I'm going to use the um, rear ones. Perfect. And now this just sits right on top of the antenna. Like that. Now I'm gonna plug the Vista in. Now I can get the ducts on. Both ducts are the same. It's not like one's left, one's right. You can use either one. Um, but when you're doing this, there is a little cutout right here for the wires. And just make sure that when you put this on, these are going through the cutout because otherwise you're gonna be pinching your wires and you don't wanna do that. So once it's like that, just flip it over and I put two screws in just to hold it in place. I'll do one here and one back here. And now I'm gonna do the same for this side. Now that those are on and they're kind of holding it together, I'm gonna to put these ones right here. Sick. This is looking awesome. So if you haven't already, push your, push your capacitor over to the side because it's now time to mount the top plate. All you gotta do, line up these uh, four holes on this side and then these four holes on this side, and then you have two screws up front that mount to the standoffs, and you're done. Don't put these two screws on yet because we have our GoPro mount to put on. That goes right like this, and then it also connects to these two holes up here that go into the standoffs. So I'm using these Gemfan five blade props. These are three inch props. And you're gonna need two clockwise ones and two counterclockwise ones. And I'm gonna go right like that. And to install these, they come with a little bag right here because obviously this hole's too big. So in here, there's little plastic pieces and those just fit right in the middle here. So do that to all your props. All right, so once you have the piece of plastic in the middle of the props, we're gonna have these uh, clockwise props go on motors one and motor four. And then the other two counterclockwise props are gonna go on motor two and three. We'll install the battery grip and that fits right like this. We have our foam for the ducts. The 
before we go over and plug this into Betaflight, I just want to make sure that power works. And anytime you're plugging a battery into a fresh build like this, you want to use something like a smoke stopper. And basically what this does is there's a little green light on here. So when you plug in a battery, that green light is going to tell you if there's a short on the board or not. If there isn't, the board will get power and everything will power up as normal. If there is a short somewhere on the board, this will detect it and it will stop power going from the battery into the board. These things are like six bucks. So if you're planning on building this, if you don't have one of these, definitely get one or make one. You can make them. So let's plug it in and hope there's no smoke. Awesome, looks good. So the light's still green. So that's telling me that there's no shorts anywhere and we should be good. So let's go plug this into Betaflight and we'll get this all set up. I got Betaflight launched, drone is plugged in. And as you can see, when you move the drone around, forward is actually forward left a little bit. So we're gonna have to tell the flight controller that it's actually rotated 45 degrees. So to do that, we're gonna go under configuration and we're gonna change yaw to 45 and then hit save reboot and we're just going to see if this makes a difference there we go so now it knows that the flight controller is rotated correctly all right so with this all set i always like to calibrate accelerometer that just kind of levels everything out i know that this table that i'm working on is level so calibrate accelerometer we'll go to ports and now we're going to change the inputs so the receiver is on UART 6, so we'll change that to 6. And the configuration MSP, we're going to turn that on for the Cadex Vista. And that was on UART 2. So we'll turn that on, and then we'll hit Save Reboot. All right, now we can go to the Configuration tab, and we can finish setting up this stuff. So I, I usually turn on RX Lost and RX Set. You can name the drone here, maximum arm angle. I change this to 50. And I actually turn air mode off, and I like to have air mode on a switch with Cinewhoops. So I'll keep that off. I'm not using GPS, and the rest of this looks good. So let's save reboot. And if you're gonna change the PID tuning at all, I can do it in here. And the rest of the stuff we will set up after we get the receiver all set. So if you wanna see how to do an ELRS, a beta FPV ELRS receiver, I have a whole separate video on that. So I'm not gonna include that in this video, but if you wanna see that, I'll leave a link to that right up here and down in the description. All right, so I have the receiver all set up and it's bound with my controller. So in order to give the receiver power, I have to plug a battery in. And if we go over to the receiver tab, we're going to change this from SBUS to Crossfire. The ELRS receiver uses the Crossfire protocol. And save reboot. Now we should see stick movement when we go to the receiver tab. And if you get something like this, so I'm moving the throttle right now on my controller and the controls are all messed up on here. All you gotta do is change this to Spectrum and save. And now everything should be mapped out exactly how it should be on your controller. Check the switches, make sure everything looks like it works and this looks good. So just make sure you save and we'll move on to modes. So this is where you can tell the controller or tell the drone what to do when you hit certain things on the controller. So we'll set up the arm auto and then flick the arm switch. That looks good right there. And if you don't see anything else here, just uncheck this. Now you can put angle on a switch. I usually do this just as safety. Beeper. And air mode. I like to have air mode on the same switch as the angle. So when it's up top here, we're gonna have air mode off acro. When it's here, we'll have acro with air mode. And then when it's completely down, I have angle mode. 
I almost never use angle mode. It's more of just a safety thing that I like to have. Um, usually I keep it right there for center whoops. So then we'll go flip over after crash. I feel like it's always good to have just in case. It's another safety thing. And that looks good. So now you can go to the top, hide unused switches, and now just kind of flick everything. Make sure that what lights up when you click the button works good. And that looks good. So save, and now we can move on to the motors tab. So to test the motors, I'm actually going to remove these props. I never put the screws on here. And I'm actually gonna take one of the other props that doesn't have a little uh, centerpiece in it. And I'm just gonna put it on motor one. So I'm gonna spin motor one, and to do that, you check this box, and now just move this slider up and motor one will start spinning. So I can see that motor is moving in the correct direction. Now I can take this prop, move it to motor two. So motor two is spinning in the wrong direction. You want motors one and four to spin the same direction and that's typically clockwise. And you want motors two and three to spin counterclockwise, opposite of whatever motors one and two are, or one and four are. So motor two is spinning the wrong direction. Let's see what motor three is doing. All right, that's also spinning clockwise. And then if we go to motor four, that's also spinning clockwise. So all the motors on this are spinning clockwise. So we're gonna have to hop over to BL Heli and we'll reverse the direction of these two motors right here. Now, before we hop over into BL Heli, what you wanna do is just make sure you disconnect from the drone. Now let's launch BL Heli. Go up here. So connect to the drone. We'll hit read setup and it probably won't do anything because you need a battery plugged in. So plug that battery back in that you were using before. Now when you click read setup, it should pop up. So this is where you can control the beep strength, like the loudness of it, and you can also change the direction of the motors. So like I said, we want motors one and four to spin the same direction and motors two and three to spin the same direction. So I'm gonna change the direction of motors two and three because the drone is already set up to have those motors spinning in that direction. So go under two, motor direction, reverse, and then do the same thing for three. And then just hit right setup. It'll do its thing. and then disconnect. All right, so this is all set. I'm gonna put the props back on here and we'll take it for a flight test.
So there you go. I've been loving how the Cinewhip flies with the 1056S batteries. I'm getting about five minutes of flight time. I'm able to do some light freestyle with it, but nothing too crazy. I'm sure if you went with an 856S, it'd be a smaller battery and you'd be able to do a little bit more freestyle with it. Otherwise, this drone is perfect for just cruising around and getting cinematic footage. In total, it weighs 615 grams, and that's with a battery and with a GoPro. Without the GoPro or battery, it weighs 280 grams. The all-in-one board makes this build nice and easy with the DJI port and minimal soldering. The frame has plenty of room for electronics. You even have these little spaces on the side here. I'm not really sure what you could use it for, but it's there if you wanted to put something in it. Inside, you also have a lot of space, so you could fit, instead of a toothpick style board, you could always put a 20 by 20 stack in there if you want to get a little bit more power. Otherwise, I've been having a lot of fun flying this drone as is. It has plenty of power, the motors stay cool, the five blade props make it relatively quiet, and the frame just overall is very clean. I love the XT60 connector back here that's fixed to the frame. It just keeps it nice and flush, don't have to worry about it. So if you enjoyed this video, make sure you subscribe to the channel and like the video. If I missed anything or if you have any questions, leave it down in the comments section. I always try and respond to as many comments as I can.